What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Comes a Time. That is Oteal. And that is Mike. Today we have a really good one for you. Marco Benevento joins us on the podcast. I'm so excited for this one today. Yes, all you fans of J-Red out there, you know this dude. And he's got a new album out, I heard. So we're going to talk to him about all of that and all of a bunch of other stuff. So hang with us, enjoy, and uh, we are here on Osiris, home to so many great podcasts. Check them all out at OsirisPod.com. If you're enjoying what you're hearing, you can join Oteal and I over on Patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod for a bonus episode each week. Um, You can check out all of my stand-up dates at MikeFenoya.com, all of Oteal's dates at Oteal.com, and uh, we will see you out there on the road. Stay safe, everybody. And then I went to the dentist and I had a row of cavities, <laughs> like basically cough drops, like eight away. And I think I had three oh, in a row and they were like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. And then I'm like, well, I've been eating like a, like a kid and, and I've been, you know, stressed. And then they're like, no, but directly what's, do you chew tobacco? And I was like, oh shit, the cough drops. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, you're basically putting sugar directly, a block of sugar on your Wow. I was like, oh, I guess and Re- that got- is all natural, right? So it's still I bet it's I bet it's got some it <laughs> sugar, burned a hole sugar. in my teeth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. But that was a long dentist trip. That was a wow. lot of lot of gas they gave me. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was like I, I was like I was dreading going there. And actually everything was fine except for like this one little thing that they that was really sensitive for me. And I'm actually gonna go back in in a couple of weeks and get it totally repaired. But I was Actually, kind of amazed that it, uh, it wasn't as bad as uh, I thought. You know, after two year, two and a half years of not going to the dentist, anyway. I just asked for the nitrous now. Like I didn't realize that you could. Yeah, and my wife was like, "Oh yeah, you can." I, just asked. I was like, "Well, sweet. I hate getting <laughs> deep Oteal. shots in my mouth. Like, oh. yeah, kid, give me the yeah. nitrous, please." Oteal, remember I told you they had flavors. Remember they offered me like cookies and cream or like French vanilla or whatever? And I was like, like, what is this fish lot? (laughs) (laughs) You want want to know a fun fact? I've never done nitrous in my entire life. No? Never. I was was always scared of it because my friends would like do it in high school and huff on these balloons and then they would turn all white and like kind of pass out. And like, and I'd be like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it scared me too for the same reason. I remember the first Horde tour, we were at this party in uh, Portland, Maine at OB's. Shout out to OB. And he had the whole band over and they had lobster and everything. They had this big nitrous tank and these huge balloons. And mm-hmm. I didn't know what it, I didn't even know what it was. Right. And one of the guys did it and just like, passed out and then let go of the balloon the balloon went you know that was like and the thing that freaked me out was the tank had ice it was frozen over with ice right and so i kept thinking well what will doing a lot of that do like internally like i don't know i just fit there's probably no logic to that at all but right i know know, i was super stoned on cannabis i was just like uh i don't think so i'm fine i'm just gonna drink beer and smoke weed dude same here man i don't want to do that my friend's lips turn all purple and they get all white they're like Mm -hmm. and they like pass out and i'm like what kind of fun is that I was like, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah so, but it's like people still do that shit but a lot of my friends are like oh you should still try it i'm like i don't i don't really have the desire to try it and I and think the oh, dentist no. is the best way because it's like a little – they no, administer okay. like – and you're just like uh, – A medical amount, yeah. I See, think that's cool. Or just, or, just, or just lay down <laughs> or just get in pass out position and just do it. Because, See, um, if you do yourself, like I don't know how much is too much. Right. Yeah, like I'd rather yeah. somebody that actually knows – nothing's worse than when you're in the lot and you see somebody do it and then they hit the ground. Like there have been times where you just catch someone sliding off a car or something and you're like, all right, stand up, like pull yourself together. You know, I mean, you've seen those people face plant and you, you hear the crack, like when their head bounces Mm. off 
pavement. That's not good, man. Like, oh, no. Dude. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, what are we not. doing here? I, oh, yeah. It's like, why are we like huffing glue like in a plastic bag? <laughs> what is the benefit of that? Anyway, it still, it still has no appeal to me, but I, yeah. I, but I haven't tried it. So I'll try, I'll do like the medical dosage at the dentist next time. <laughs> we were or um, not if you could take it to school. <laughs> we were just chatting about I was in Burlington, Vermont doing uh, some shows this weekend. And I was thinking about when I saw you guys, I saw a grab up there at the Essex Junction Fairgrounds. Gordon, Russo, Anastasio, Benevento. Wow. What a fun, fun lineup that was <laughs> at the wow. and pouring rain. Wow. I mean, this wow. was like, shit, 20 years ago, maybe? Yeah, I like barely remember that. I don't know if that was the last day of tour or like the very beginning of tour. That's how that's how much I don't remember it. But I do remember <laughs> it was crazy rainy. Yes. And, and that, that time period was really wild for Joe and I because we were like, I don't know, I was like 20 – seven or something i was i was young and we're like touring around with half a fish and i just couldn't believe it i was like oh baby my life is i'm gonna be so famous after this <laughs> it's gonna be like i'm gonna have my own tour but i think like when joe and i go on tour like we, we could have our own buses and then we'll have like crew you know and like of course nothing changed i mean we granted, we a lot of fans but i was i was just like in shock in awe of that that like Trey and Mike were down to, I mean, we were in a quartet together. We were in a, we were a band for a while, for a summer. You guys were we, phenomenal. We oh, I loved so it. Fun. Anyway, what a wild, yeah. uh, wild time. That was yeah. an interesting tour because it was you guys. And I, I remember like with Phil too, I believe was like the run. Yeah. You we, guys would do a set. Phil would do a set. Yeah. And we would alternate depending on the night who would headline. So sometimes Phil and friends would open and then we would headline or vice versa. And we, and it was the summer and we were, and we were playing like the garden state art center and like, you know, huge outside places. And I was like, this is so cool. Uh, SPAC, Sarah, uh, SPAC, we played SPAC. Yeah. And anyway. I, yeah. I, I did was that the first time you did amphitheaters and stuff like that? That was the first time I did like a uh, amphitheater tour. Yeah. 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 And what year was that again? You said might. Oh, geez. It had to be like 2004 or five. Maybe yeah. way on back there. Something maybe like that. I can't, I can't. 2006 maybe or six. something. Six. Yeah. It, it's all like a blur. 2000, yeah. 2005 or six. One of those. <laughs> I went to it's a bunch crazy. of them. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was amazing. It was like a whole nother level of, uh, of like gigging and performing. I, I, I I, I wasn't nervous or anything because, you know, I've been touring and playing forever and playing with Joe forever. So there was that. It was just more like, how do you deal with sound and communication and like and like music in this crazy environment sonically? You know, it's just like it's just such a crazy different way to communicate uh, musically. But uh, and I remember after like the third day, uh, we all like had a huddle or maybe the second day we're like, yo how do we make, how do we like make this work? Cause <laughs> like, it's just like me going at it. And I had, I was playing like distorted Wurlitzer and heavy shit. And then Trey was also doing, you know, more to guitar stuff. So it was just like this onslaught. And I remember like, just kind of talking it over, like with the guys about how we should make it happen. And then we were fine from there, but it was like, we had to have like a, we had to have a meeting, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, like, I don't know, maybe they had to sort of t help Joe and I, d you know, deal with the, the sonic issues and playing in gigantic sheds and figuring that out. But uh, we figured it out and had a great tour and a great time. And, and, and to this day, it was probably one of the best tours of my life. It was, it was awesome. Incredible. It's a, a, to me, it's mostly about getting used to hearing it that way. Because, you know, even when you play clubs, you know, your rig sounds perfect. Yeah. And in this club, it sounds like shit. And in <laughs> this club, exact same setting, it yeah. sounds okay. This club sounds great. So you're always, like, getting used to how you hear it in yeah. different places, which, you know, I like the inner ear monitors for that. It sounds weird, but it's the same every time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the weird you know versus the weird you don't. Exactly. Yeah. I, I would rather it be weird the same way every night than weird different every night and right. not have to take that emotional ride. Yeah. That, that, that makes sense in, the, in a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. 
<laughs> but like, so Brooklyn Bowl for you has just clearly like become something where it's just like you, that's the weird, you know, but love, right? The home sound. Absolutely. Yeah. For, well, for me, we, we played there so many times. Um, right. Yeah. You sometimes you just get used to the, the weird sounding club that you play all the time. You're like, Oh, right. It's Brooklyn bowl. It, it, there's no, I can never hear the da 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 like that, you know, and like, Oh, it's because you are also bowling. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, and, uh, yeah, Brooklyn bowl is kind of an oddly dead sounding room for a, for a brick. Yeah, it's a not brick. Bad. Isn't it, isn't it amazing? Like it's, mm-hmm. I almost like wish it was like more, they like did so much to the stage that you almost feel like you're almost in like a studio on stage. It's kind of bizarre how, oh. how dead it is. But, um, but yeah, totally. That's, that's definitely home turf. I've played there so many times, but with J rad and with my own band and with so many other people, soul live as a guest. Oh, right. Yo, maybe I even did one of those with you, O'Teal. Uh, Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sure. yeah. But uh, after year after year. Yeah. That's why I love uh, Fox Theater in Boulder. I yeah. love the way the sound room sounds from the stage. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. It's just like, and because of that, I've never had a bad gig there. Yeah. Yeah. Never. With all the different things I've played with. And uh, I just always look forward to it. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My new, my new, you know, I live in Woodstock, New York now. I live in upstate New York. And so my new sort of hometown venue is playing at Lee Von Helms Barn yeah. all the time. Oh, and, and yeah. I talk about a great sounding room. It's just like, <laughs> it's like, it's like the Mecca. It's, he- it's a church. It's like heaven for every musician yeah. up there. It's God. the perfect amount of, uh, of reflection and, you know, yeah. deadness. And, uh, they, I want to, a guy that t- was close with Levon said that he used hemlock, which is a kind of wood that Levon did a bunch of research on. And I don't know, like got deep in hemlock and that kind of wood and what it does to sound. So he built his whole uh, barn out of hemlock. And uh, apparently that's why it sounds so good. And I actually just moved into this new studio, new space, and I bought all the same shit. I got hemlock everywhere. <laughs> no kidding. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, just, I, I, I finished my garage with all this. Um, oh, look how all beautiful. This, like, uh, uh, reclaimed barn wood and like nice. you know, rough cut, uh, all this stuff. So and it's true. It sounds amazing in here. Uh, That's great. That that room looks like it smells amazing. It smells amazing. You're exactly <laughs> right. It really does. It's uh, it. My friend calls it ins- inspiration station. Dude, <laughs> all those keys. Oh, oh my god, damn! That's incredible. Got, look at this. Look at this little area. I got the, the Hammond and the Mellotron and oh come on, and, baby. Uh, the Whirly and the all sorts oh, of stuff. Clavinet. Yeah. I'm always making making music when I'm home. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, we like go to we have our job, quote unquote. We go to work, quote unquote, and we come home and we do the same shit. But it's, <laughs> it's like after tour, I like I'm like, oh, I'm home. I just want to like play piano and like record and just chill out. I'm like, wait, I, I was just doing that. And like it's like somebody with an office job being like, oh, I just want to get back on the computer and work again. You know, it's, <laughs> That's how you know you're doing the right thing because I know if I had forty million dollars, I'd be doing exactly the same thing. Dude, same actually, thing. I'd be doing more. I would be, doing- you know, because it would. I'd be recording more it's and true. writing more and probably traveling a little less. But I would be playing just. I'd be playing more. Dude, it's it's amazing the kind of job and it, it, it's so rewarding. It's so fulfilling and it's. It's like a dream job. And of course, living up in the Catskills, I'm like literally the dream with my mm. studio and playing and the ki- my kids and my wife. We all get along great and we all like hanging out together. And uh, anyway, yeah, it is it is it is a dream job for sure. You know, um, <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's the most important thing you just that last sent. I mean, all of that being in the Catskills and being in that environment and being in that air, I mean, I feel like that was something that the pandemic maybe kind of brought some people was like the whole, like, where the hell am I? Where am I supposed to be? And what should I be doing? You know, yeah. like kind of had to like pivot and like yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily um, I was here and I didn't have to you know, do much pivoting because the only thing I had to figure out was uh, how to like survive and maybe get some, <laughs> some uh, money from the bank and all that shit. But, uh, <laughs> but I was mainly here and, and, and dialed in, 
and was like in a pretty great space to be quarantined versus some of my other musician friends like Joe, for example, Russo, he was like, he had the opposite experience of me. He was like moving from Brooklyn to New Jersey and had like a, a studio space that he could not go to. His drums were locked up in storage for like months. He was like, he like called me up like manic. Like I haven't played my drums in two months. And oh. I was like, I was like, dude, if I oh. couldn't play the piano for like two months, two months, dude, I would lose. Like I would, I would like, I would, I would like have a mental breakdown. I don't know. Honestly, it would be, no. it wouldn't I mean, be healthy. So, uh, you know, for all the, uh, you know, of all the musician friends that I know, I feel like I was lucky and fortunate enough to be here and not, I wasn't in a transition phase. I was just here. That's and great. Nice. But, uh, man, like on the flip side, some musicians really had a difficult time with that. Um, yeah. that are, especially ones that are living in the cities because you can't, you couldn't go anywhere. Oh man. So, I mean, just thinking that's about how that. comedy was stand up just ended. And yeah. I just had to stop. And then it was like, when we, when we started to ease back in, it was like rooftops right. outside of a diner. Right. Like, you know, I did a drive in 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 Cape Cod. Like, I think that was the first show I did coming <laughs> back. Right. And it was like, holy shit. And I was doing it to cars, doing stand up to cars where like applause break was like flashing high beams. Like, that's how they let you know they liked your jokes because they were in cars. Dude, <laughs> that's, like, a, that's so bizarre and so weird. <laughs> wow. It's like <laughs> sign language. It right. was crazy. Laughter it is really was. <laughs> high beam flat. Your flashers like some what? weird like Palo Alto science experiment. Like, don't a, laugh. Flash, flash lights if you like yeah, this like, joke. Like a close encounters. Like you know, just like sound. You like, like, respond with sounds. You know. Just, yeah. yeah. One of the one of the weird things too, and coming back that I remember was uh, when we first started to do the clubs again. We had plexiglass in front of us. It was almost like we were in like the Pope mobile. And oh. when, or like a penalty box and the light, the way the light would hit the, the, um, plexiglass, it would reflect. It was like a distorted version of me was looking back at me. Like, so if the I told a joke mirror. and it bombed, yeah, fun, like garbage pail kid version of me was like looking at me. So if the joke didn't work, it was just like, my ego was looking at me like you suck. <laughs> just oh like, my Oh God. my God, dude, this sucks. Oh. Yeah. It was a really weird way to come back to it, but you yeah. look like shit and your jokes aren't funny. Uh, yeah. You're <laughs> fat and you're not funny. So this is how they see you. But no, I mean, that's a bl so amazing that you were able to experience it like that way. I mean, so is that how you cut your new record? Like, oh, dude, I mean, <laughs> Play I like ground time. I like, I like, I almost didn't put this record out because I was like, is this really weird? And like, <laughs> it's like is this like a, 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 you know, like a memoir of some musician losing his shit <laughs> during the pandemic? Like, because, like, I don't know if you've heard it, but it's, like, there's some <laughs> weird moments on the record. And 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 I'm playing all the instruments, so it's, like, kind of bad because I don't really play drums and I don't really play bass. <laughs> but I just went for it anyway. And That like, tends to be great, though. Like, I know. I, you know. Yeah, so I was, I, I was so um, productive during the pandemic. I have – I still have songs that I haven't gotten to that I have written and made during lockdown – and I, I was just like, maybe I shouldn't put, maybe I shouldn't put this out, you know, like, I don't know. And then I, I was just like, you know what, this is a snapshot in time. This is a crazy moment. You know, things are kind of opening up again. I feel like I should let people hear what, what I did because it's, it's out there and not, I mean, not crazy far out there. Um, but you know, it's just a lot different than any other record I've made. And I spent a lot of time with, you know, with, with these tape machines and like engineering. I mean, I engineered it. I produced it. I bounced it to tape machines. I bounced it to my four track. <laughs> you I, went George Martin. <laughs> I went, yeah, I went like, it's full, like, it's just like, you could hear the tape hiss, like compressing in and out. Like it's, oh, it's nice. like a whole nother ball game. So That's beautiful. I was a little like, I was like, you know, as, and sometimes when I listen to it, I'm like, oh man, this is. Some people are not going to like this, you know, and, or, you know, people are going to be like, was that a song? What was that? Like, uh, <laughs> so there's like, there's like, but you know, then also there's like, there's some tight songs on there, maybe like three or four, but then a lot, of them, a lot of them are like little, little vignettes of little ideas, maybe unfinished ideas. But I was like, you know what, this is, this is cool. I like, I like it. 
Uh, but I, I had a little bit of doubt for sure. Um, I think that's good though. You know, like that's Colonel Bruce 101. Remember that uh, we did call it um, the mirrors of embarrassment. Oh yeah. And that was one of his big things. Like you have to like close off, you know, magnifying glass mirror. This is it. This is really you. And it's like, you can't let other people's expectations of right. what, like, is this a song? I don't know. I put on something. I want to, I expect to hear a sound. Yeah. yeah. And if that expectation is frustrated, okay, I'm cool with that too. <laughs> you know, like, I want I want to hear it more than ever now that you've described it. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. Oh, I know, yeah, I, I, yeah, like, now that I listen back to it, I'm like, I'm glad that I actually did make a record. Literally, I made vinyl. It's coming out. Uh, Kevin just sent me a picture of the vinyl and I'm like, okay, right. Yeah, we made the record. We did it. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad we did it. You know, it's... Uh, Cause it's, it's weird, but you know, at the same time I was telling my friends, I was like talking to a friend of mine and I was like, yeah, well, you know, this is like kind of a weird record and I'm playing all the instruments myself. And he was like, you haven't done that yet. Cause <laughs> people would kind of, you know, who know me would be kind of expected me to maybe have done that already. And, and so I was like, oh, you're right. I actually haven't, I haven't done that. So yeah, I should put it out cause I haven't done it. Heck so, yeah. Whatever. Heck yeah. You know, it's a lot more lemonade from the pandemic. It's yeah. sad to me that so many people like either like you oh, know yeah. just flat out died. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah, came up with this amazing batches of lemonade. I can't yeah. believe Joe couldn't play his drums for two months. I just seeing him and knowing like being such a fan of him, it's like he must have been literally banging on everything in the house. I mean, that must have been <laughs> I think he was I think like he would if he was here, he'd be like, dude, I was just depressed. Like he yeah. he, he he you know, and he had like kids uh, his kids at that time were like five or like four and like one and a half, which is like the hardest. Yeah. You know, like you don't get any sleep. You're yep. just like, you're just a, you're, you know, you're both you and your wife are just full on like passing the kids around. Maybe, maybe you get like 20 minutes at the most to yourself every day to it's do trenches. Some, yeah, man. I mean, you know, O'Teal, it's like, it's pretty, that's a pretty rough time. My kids are a lot older. My kids are 15 and 12. So it was like, yeah. we were like going on walks and like sleeping in and like doing zoom school. And like, yeah. it was hanging out. It was like, I, I, you know, well, you know, Teal, like you and I are on the road. We're just road dogs. So it was kind of nice to not be on the road and kind yeah. of amazing to reconnect with my family. Yeah. And be like, yo, yeah, because I would, I would, I remember I did a, a, a 10 day tour and I came home and I was like, it was a couple of years ago when the kids were younger. And I was like, oh, I just got back. How long did it seem like I was gone? And they're like, I don't know, like a year. Oh, shit. You know? and, and like, you know, for them, time is so, yeah. moving so slow, so slow. Like they're at school staring at the clock and five minutes is a long time for them, you know? Yeah. So, and I just, I remember when, when they said that, it kind of like bugged me out. Like, oh man, like mm. I'm gone a lot and they know I'm gone a lot. So for the pandemic, it was kind of, it was amazing to like help the kids cook for the kids. Like, yeah. you know, like just like play with them and, and also, you know, try to remain positive because everyone's very confused yeah. as to what's going on. And like, yeah. hey, we're just doing school on a computer and you just have to wear a mask and not see anyone, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like kind of like, that, you know, not just wanting to make sure no one's in freak out mode, you know, and nobody, nobody, everybody stayed pretty cool here. Again, being surrounded by the mountains and all the greenery, uh, being able to open the door and just walk through the woods, it, you know. Yeah, you got deer like coming up to your house and shit, right? Dude, I got like, I got goats. I got, <laughs> I got peacocks. I got chickens. We have like a whole farm. We have eight acres. It's paradise. Like, yeah. Yeah. So it was like, oh, let's get. I think I bought more chickens during the pandemic. <laughs> that was my that was my splurge. I was like, more eggs. I don't know if I should do this, but I'm buying more chickens. That's amazing. And uh, anyway, so I yeah, it was, it was good, good vibes up here for sure. You know, I actually had a, I, I'm pretty sure I took a couple months off playing bass, and like the same thing with kids. But then what happened? was I started playing more than I ever had. Nice. Like I just like was up till four in the morning, you know, just I just dug into a bunch of stuff 
that I had been kind of scared to work on. It just seemed like too big. And I was like, well, we got nothing but time now. Let's see if we can wow. pick our way like a quarter up the mountain. Wow. And then it was like, then <laughs> you're just in it. And yeah. so I was like, it's, I hadn't played like that since I was like 17. Dude. So I, I kind of understand where Joe is, even though I had two months where I was like, whatever, right. you know, I was glad to not be on the road, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was kind of, kind of a nice thing. I mean, now that, now that everything's open again, I'm like, Hey, uh, can we have another, uh, pandemic roll through? Cause I'm getting real tired. All of a sudden. <laughs> so, but it, it, you know, now that the floodgates are open, it's like slightly overwhelming, right? You're like, Oh wait, man, like I've, I've been home. I, I don't want to go to Newark airport to get on a plane and then get in the cab and then go to the hotel and then go to, you know, all this shit, you know, it's like all of a sudden you're moving again and it's a little jarring. You're like, wow, I did this. I would, I did this all the time. You're like, yeah. I, Do you I, feel well, like uh, it, you notice the wear of travel more? Cause I started noticing okay. it years ago, but you know, I'm like 57, I'll be 50 in a couple months. And I just, I'm wondering if post pandemic, I've heard some other people much younger than me be like, yeah, man, I, I need that travel day before. Like I won't, do anything if I can on a travel day. So if we are just going to rehearse that day, I want to travel like the night before. Yeah, no, I, I definitely halfway through rehearsal. I'm just like, Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. And that's totally happened to me. I'm, I'm, I'll be 45 in a, in a month or so. And, and so I, even though I'm, uh, over 10 years younger than you, I still feel like that, like, oh, I still need a, like, it is jarring. It's like, a, you know, I do need that. Like, we just did a tour. We, uh, we played the Westville Music Bowl yeah. in Connecticut. And then after the gig, we drove to Newark Airport, got there at like. I saw that. You saw that, right? And then slept from like, slept from like one to five, got on a plane to L.A., arrived at 10 in the morning and played Redondo Beach Festival uh, that day. And we were all looking at each other like we were like, how like we would do that. We would like do that. And it wasn't yeah. a thing. Uh, or it was a thing, but we would like do that more than, you know, once or twice a year, obviously. And uh, and we were all like, this is so difficult. This is so hard. <laughs> I'm so tired and, you know, like sitting on a point. Oh, yeah, it's it is. It's funny. So like eventually it'll it'll become easier. You know, I hope. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Well, yeah, sometimes you have to like <laughs> push back. I get the gigs now that say, "What do you think about this little run?" And, and I, I don't ever say anything right away. I get my phone out and do mileage, and I'm like, "Hey, Dad, <laughs> you're trying to pull a fast one there." Oh, totally. Uh, 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 That's an overnighter. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're doing, man. Yeah, I see you. Uh, yeah, like, nice oh. try. You're the one that's going to be sitting at home, just like, you know, watching me do all the gigs. I'm going to be doing all the driving. And it's going to be like, oh, no, it's a five hour drive. And then you look at Google Maps and it's like six hours and 10 minutes. And you're like, dude. With no traffic. It's but not here's the thing. Yeah. Hours. It's the, it's the late to bed early up because yeah. you don't have any choice about the late to bed. I yeah. want you to start at 1230 at night. Okay. Yeah. So then you're going to play and you're going to do your thing. And then by the time you get to bed, like, you know, we're not really going to go to sleep. Because right. if I go to sleep, I might sleep through the alarm. Oh, absolutely. So I'm going to stay up and hope I sleep on the plane. That's not – you keep doing that over and over and over again and you can get yeah. jacked up. Well, and, and the thing – Marco, you know, the thing that like for fans and for you – I mean a residency type situation like Westville mm -hmm. Music Bowl – Oh, that's pretty bad. dope, you know? I mean, for you guys too, though, because it's like... If you, you can draw that much, that's And you great. get to know the place, and they had a early start, early end. Those shows were like 6 p.m., I think the show started, and 10 oh, p.m. it was over. Yeah. 6 p.m.? Oh, awesome. Yeah, oh, dude, it's like 6.30 start. It's ideal. For a few, and yeah. like the best pizza you've ever had. Yeah, you know, baby. Yeah. 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 And, That's right. And, yeah. I'm you know, from New Haven. So, and, and then you could like hang out and like actually fall asleep at midnight and yeah. actually get some sleep and do it again the next day. Uh, but man, yeah. th those shows coming out of the, like last summer when Westville opened and when we saw the, all the shows you, you guys were doing and it, it was just like, 
We needed it so damn bad. Those like, were to go your to first sh- back, weren't they? Yeah. Those I were mean, your first back. Well, I, for well, you, for Mike. Both of, yeah. 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 I, that was yeah. the first shows I went, concerts that I went to. And Westville is such an awesome, they did it so perfect. I mean, I they really did such an unbelievable job. And, and you had all the space you needed. Parking was like a breeze. Yeah. The, the, the staff was supportive. The music, that the sound is dynamite. Yeah. And to be open air and not have any of those worries. And then the minute you guys hit the stage, Marco, I don't know if you could see it, but everyone just elevated and cried and screamed and sang along. And, and yeah. it was, it was, I'm sure. Was, that was a lot of people's first shows because oh, we God, played man. for a long time and people were like, this is my first show. And however many years, you know, yeah, and I've been playing for months and months and months and months. But, it's yeah, kind of neat how early back then it was just yeah. like, oh. it's really neat how like no. bands and venues kind of reinvented it a little bit and was like, if you guys like this joint, why don't you do 10 here this year or whatever the case yeah. may be? Yeah, yeah. I think we did nine shows from like That's Memorial awesome. Day to whenever it got cold, you know, like, uh, you know. Yeah, some time. I was at a, I was at a couple of those cold ones. Yeah. But they were great. <laughs> they were I think cool. I went to four or five of them. Yeah, it was it was nice to finally like actually see an audience, a big audience, and play mm-hmm. for an outside audience that felt safe for us and for the for the audience members and and our kids and my wife came to that first one and we encored the first gig and this is grand and this is like the first gig after like a year and a half or more of not really playing like a gig gig and uh and i remember the kids being in the front row with their masks on and we encored with ripple and yeah. and i had like begged my kids to learn ripple and sing it during the pandemic for some reason i forget why maybe for some like video thing and they learned it and they were kind of they like kind of hated the song they're like dad this is so boring you know and they're like <laughs> But let's, let, you know, they like did it. And, and then anyways, we were there playing Ripple that night as an encore and they're in the front row with their masks on and their hands up, like singing Ripple. And um, I, I got really emotional, like seeing the kids singing and yeah. seeing all the people and being like, right, I'm a musician and this is what I do. And it was yeah. taken from me for so long, but I love this, you know, as yeah. much as it's exhausting and it's like hard to do and be gone and travel blah, 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 and I'm like, I, yeah. You know, I just was reminded of like my of my being and what my what my purpose is here on this world for a while I'm going to be here. I was like, I play music and I play piano and that's what I do. And I love it, you know, and, and like, <laughs> we love it, too, man. <laughs> and like to see the kids there. It was like really like, oh, yeah, you know, and, and that was another thing. I, I, I taught the kids. I gave them piano lessons every every day during the pandemic. Oh, sweet. And, and, and had a tape recorder on the piano and recorded their lessons and timed their nice. lessons. I was like, we'll only do 10 minutes, just 10 minutes, you know. And got him into learning chords and and uh, songs. And Ruby likes classical music, so I taught her a Bach invention. She memorized a Bach. Nice. Wow. Uh, and and Isla learned every song on Ziggy Stardust. She <laughs> she, she could play the whole record through. Nice. I could put it on the vinyl on and just like leave, and she Holy would shit. like she'd be playing the whole. She could play the whole thing. So. They learned a lot during during the pandemic too, but just just to see them see me do what I love and everything be reopened again was was an amazing experience. Oh, uh, it's the I, best. It really I, is. Awful. I got back in touch with it too because it, I've, you know, the travel part is just I I don't dig it. <laughs> you know? Nobody does. And, uh, <laughs> But I realize, you know, yeah, if I didn't, if there was no capitalism, I, I would do this all the time. And what to see on the other end how bad other people feel that they need it. It's not like a want to them. To them, it's like food, water, love, live music. music. You know, like it's a need. Yeah. And I- uh, I'm lucky to be able to like fulfill because I'm just like... It's like a video game. I mean, it's more it gives me more emotions than that. But you know, it's not like Yeah. I don't know. It's a it becomes more of a, a sacred thing when when you see the effect it has on people. You're like, wow, I'm really super lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird too when like at those shows in particular at like at Brooklyn Bowl at, at, at um Westville Music Bowl, but also seeing that in different iterations, like when I came to see Dead and Co. O'Teal and like you were talking about, like 
people going like, oh, this is my first one back or whatever it may be. Like watching those little moments of like, holy shit, it's been so long. Like watching someone's battery get filled up to 100% or watching someone's tank kind of overflow and just tears rushing out. And it it's so fun to watch someone else go through that and you kind of see them and go like, fucking yeah i felt that last week so yeah it's 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 big it's super important and uh we had your uh partner in crime karina reichman on too and uh and scott metzger too and scott metzger yeah we've been waiting to have you you got you and karina together on stage must be like (laughs) the highest level of happiness and energy not not even on stage is in the van in the hotel room at the restaurant like we (laughs) <laughs> have the best time together it's like almost too it's too fun and it's it's crazy positive and it's great it's not too fun it's actually great i love it and i love <laughs> arena's positivity and her energy and and then just going into our whole crew with my band so we we travel with three musicians and two crew yeah. just five of us so it's karina myself our drummer uh and our lighting guy and our sound guy and we all get together. We all get along great. And we're like, we know how hard it is to be on the road. And we know that really the best thing to do is just like be positive, hang. play music, hang, be funny, you know, be yourself, you know, and, and Karina and, and my buddy, Jeff Volkhausen, he does lights. He's so great. I love Jeff. Jeff is amazing. And he, I'm glad that you know him. He's, he's, <laughs> um, he's so funny and check this out, dude. I, there's a, I'll fi- try to find this picture, but I've known Jeff since second grade. Wow. So, so, um, so I, um, you know, there's this picture of him and I like winning the, uh, the minor league. Uh, we like won a, the baseball championship in like third grade. And we're like under the lights in New Jersey. We like want to picture of me like holding the trophy and like Jeff, this hat off, you know, anyway, we, so we go way back, you know, Jersey, Jersey kids. And, uh, so we just have a great time. Our our whole our whole scene is so much fun, and and we're also uh, you know responsible. We we get to the place on time. We do our sound check. Yeah. We, we have enough time to eat, and you know we make sure we 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 have a driver that you know that can get us there. It's like even though we're we're playing, my band plays like you know Williams, uh, like the you know like Bowery Ballroom, like five hundred person kind of cap rooms, and um and that's fun and that's great. It's but it's a smaller scene. And it's awesome. And Karina did like a tour with uh, some other band and she was like, well, my dad, uh, my nickname is Bunky. My dad's always called me Bunky. And I, and I, and I mistakenly let Karina know that now she, she always calls me Bunky. But she was like, she was like, Bunky, I don't get it. Like we have so much fun on the road. I go out with some other bands and it's, why is it not as much fun? I'm like, well, yeah. you know, I mean, that's how it is. Some, sometimes you go on the road with some bands and you're like, that like funny shit isn't there. Or like the, like the it's okay stuff isn't there. It's just like some negativity and like maybe some like tired and quiet people, you know what I mean? Which is fine. And that's how it is. Everybody's got their own thing. But she was, she was just like, is it me? <laughs> like, do we have like the best time? We have the best time. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we do. And you'll find out that it cannot be beat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chemistry is just chemistry. chemistry. Off, exactly. off stage and on. Exactly. You know? Yeah. No, it's, it's amazing how that, that works. And like, um, I gotta say like, shout out to Katie and Jake because, uh, there are crew guys now with our uh, crew persons, with uh, O'Teal and friends, and they have this thing with each other, like Love. in New Orleans, and it's and so separately and together, and then the way it just mixes with the whole band, it just makes everything so much more fun. Yeah, like I mean, it's you know, just, it's, you know it's like like going back to what we were talking about earlier about like music being your job. It's not you can't you can't quite call it a job because it's so much fun. It's what you love to do. So if you get guys on the road that are doing it because they love to do it and you're going to make some money. But like, I mean, we're not in it for the money. I mean, like, no, you play music and you work at a job and that's how I like, that's how I gauge things. I'm like, if you turn this into work, 
Right. You've committed a, a true sin against yeah. something sacred. Like yeah. it's play. It's not work. Yeah. Like we're out there <laughs> playing. Like you got to have crew guys that are getting along and like hanging out. Like, dude, you're not, there's no way any amount of money could equal the amount of work you're actually doing. Or yeah, it's a exactly. lot, of money, but you're not getting yeah, that. That's, just, that's a great point. You know, it's like, you know, it's like you with comedy, any, all this stuff, you're not, it'll kill you. Yeah, you can't you give start, your life for it. Right? You can't be like, oh, well, it's not in my job description to do this extra stuff. And you're like, oh, dude, no, it's not. Yeah. How it is. Like, <laughs> I just flew from the West Coast to the East Coast <laughs> overnight and played gigs. On right. The yeah. Like, <laughs> like I slept, come on. I slept for like maximum six hours over the last three days. And, <laughs> you know, what? <laughs> I'm, I ain't in it. You know, I ain't in it for the. I, you know, it doesn't make any sense the, the amount of money you make and versus the <laughs> hours you're you're putting in. But that's not the point. The point is to have fun and to get along and to make the world better with music and like figure out how to get your friend out of their funk if they're a little upset. Yep. Make try the most. Like, try to make everybody feel happy. Stop the van and go somewhere and be like, let's go here right now because we're all freaking tired and fuck it. We'll be like an, uh, 45 minutes late for the gig, but let's go with <laughs> that food and chill. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's a Tuesday and we're in Mississippi. Like, relax. <laughs> okay. You know, relax. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you I, reminded me that uh, but the last two gigs I played with my brother, Kofi, we did that. We went from. The West Coast to Borderland in New York, like night one one of those nights was its birthday. It was the tw- wow. September twenty second, twenty first and twenty second, or twenty second and twenty third, and it was that West that coast to coast jump. And I look, you know, man, it took it out of me. Yeah. I could see it come. I had time to prepare for it yeah. mentally. But now that it's way in the rearview mirror, I'm so glad we did it because <laughs> it's all on tape. Really? And those are and you like everyone that ever dies, you always go, Oh, I didn't know that was gonna be the last gigs that we played together. And yeah. that was it. So oh, we did man. it coast to coast over wow. two nights. That's so right? deep, man. No, it's true, man. Life is short yeah. and, and you don't you don't realize that you gotta make the most of it and be positive and like realize, you know, yeah, at any moment, at any moment some shit could go down and you never know. Mm-hmm. when it might be your last gig when you might not see that guy anyone again and like you just gotta yeah. be reasonable about it and not push yourself too hard and you know be yeah pop. yeah that's tough that's, that's crazy that's wild i heard the best best uh observation today on this podcast by his cat matthew fox and uh he said you know we if we think of we we tend to take every single breath for granted because we have so many breaths. He goes, but consider the first one, how much that first one means. Like if you've had a baby, that first, you know, (laughs) you're waiting for that (laughs) because they're in liquid before that. And he goes and consider your last one, you know, like if, if someone in your life that you love passes that last breath, he goes, but everyone in between is just as significant but we're just not grateful for him. And I was on the bike this morning thinking about that. Like my head was going, I was like, Hey man, these breaths are just as good as that first one. And your last one will be. So, you know, enjoy these two brother. And just that thought has helped me. It's going to help me reclaim a lot. That's that's going to help me right now. I I like that. I'm going to, that's going to be in my bag for sure. I like, but you guys do that innately like you and Karina, when we had Karina and I was like, God, you're like a unicorn. She's like, well, you can't be addicted to what you haven't tried. Like I'm already here. And oh, I was like, she said, wow. she said, I wrote down something she said in my phone and I kept it as a, she said like, she's found foundationally calm or something like that. Oh. Remember that OTL? Like she said, like, she just comes from like a foundationally <laughs> calm imagine. place. And I was like, I didn't even know that place existed. <laughs> like, that's amazing. You could be foundationally calm. <laughs> like, I just, yeah, that's called world. great parents that's called great parents is right i I literally was gonna say the same thing i mean fortunately (laughs) karina and i both and jeff and a lot of the guys that we travel with come from like really good families you know um uh, karina's parents are incredibly nice and supportive and super cute and just like come to all the gigs and and uh my mom and my dad are very supportive my dad loves to sing 
and you know, there's a piano at their house, and whenever I go, I play piano. My dad sings Neapolitan music with me. He loves singing operatic wow. Italian music, and Jesus. like, and we love eating what we eat so well together. And we uh-huh. and we 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 show off uh, food to each other. And uh, my parents luckily have moved up to the Hudson Valley, so they live close to me now, so we can hang out all the time. But yeah, you're right, Oteil. It, it is like good, you know parenting you know parents being around parents being supportive parents being a little bit in your face you know like what are you doing mm-hmm. what are you doing is it you know just kind of keep keeping you in check that should be the interview process from now on it's like we don't want to meet you we want to meet your parents <laughs> <laughs> we want to see where you came from <laughs> a lot of people can fake it and then when yeah. you get to know them it's like oh fuck, well it's yeah, funny because it, it's, it breaks both ways though like i know some people who yes. are the best Best dads, because yeah. they had the worst. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> they like, I know yeah. everything wow. not to do, and no, I, I, it's just. But sometimes it breaks the other. Most of the time, probably it breaks the other way. Like you carry the same scar that they carried, sure. and now you got to like dig out of that. And you don't even know where they got it from. Right. Wow. You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> Marco, just like we celebrate every breath, I celebrate every slice of pizza. <laughs> and I need to know that since you've been spending all this time in New Haven, do you have a favorite? I know it's a very, you know, contentious and tumultuous conversation, <laughs> uh-huh. New Haven pizza. But, um, you well, know, I mean, are you partial Pepe's, to any? Uh, Frank Pepe's is like the, is the best, right? I mean, yeah. Well. That. Um, but, I, you know, out. I don't. Honestly, I don't have that much experience with it except for playing at Westville and then getting after show pizza. And honestly, it might even just come from like the pizza truck that's right out there. And that's still so amazing. Yeah. I just like that it's really thin. The slices are small. They just – it's not too anything. It's just really great. But uh, So I, I, I like know about it and love it, but I, I couldn't pinpoint – I had an amazing experience at Frank uh, Pepe's on a tour and I thought that was great. Okay. Um, what about you? Do you, do you have a, oh, huh. well, <laughs> I grew up in the area, so okay. I kind of, so, um, you know, I've yeah. had them all 10 million times. Okay. Uh, there's probably five or six, like really dynamite places that are, uh, in the new Haven area. And I, it would depend on consistency. It would depend on how long the line is, what season it is, it, where the parking was. I mean, there was a lot of different stuff that goes into it, but, uh, <laughs> It's like I'm, a serious thing. Oh, it's one million percent serious, Oteil. There were like, in, it, it, growing up, it was like, oh, they're not, you know, they don't like modern. We don't talk to them, you know. But uh, that was like the the one thing that I would get like, uh, you know, pretty serious about. But next time you're in town, yeah. maybe I can bring you guys a couple of different uh, – you know, we'll do a blind taste test and we'll see. Oh, dude, I would we'll, we'll record it. That. I would yeah. love that. Um, yeah, I would love that. Uh, my my one one thing I learned to do to do during the pandemic is or is I is to make a really damn good pizza because my my mm-hmm. dad and my grandma my grandma made amazing pizza she thought my dad had to make it the way this Italian way which is basically like a pizza which is like kind of like a tomato pie like not much cheese at all it's just like yeah, a, grated cheese on top yeah just a little parmesan on top but mainly just sauce and like not too thin not too thick but like. Uh, anyway, that was a, that was a, I like took, took pizza making like lessons with my dad. He came over and showed me how to, and one of the biggest tools that I didn't even really realize with making it a pizza, the way that we like to make it is the, the paintbrush. Cause you could, you dip it in the olive Mm, oil oil. and you're constantly going around the crust. You're like pulling it out of the oven, putting more olive oil. That's how it gets. That's how it gets golden. That's how it gets golden. And and it's so hungry. Okay, so can we do this? We want to do a comes a time special. Oh my god! Cooking with Marco Benevento yes. and just give us all a pizza. Le- it could be short. Just Dude. give us a pizza lesson. Dude. We'll all be in our kitchen with. Uh, send us like what we got to get ahead of time. We <laughs> would totally do that. I would so love cool. that so much, dude. So down. Absolutely. I love cooking and I love the art of it's just. It's like simple food. It's just flour, water. You know, it's like not not much. It's cheap stuff. Yeah, but that's a, it's a whole thing. It's like the art. I could pass it to my kids. It's the art. Yeah, oh, like you know. One day I'll be like Nigel. Let me show you this. Come man. closer. Let me tell you what Marco I learned this from taught Marco. me. Let oh. me do it from his one grandmother. Day, one day yeah. you will teach your children what Marco has taught me. 
<laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I do. I, I I love that. I love. I love. Well, in the in the ingredients and the quality of everything, like where you're living right now. I mean, you're getting legitimately the freshest shit that you could possibly. I mean, the eggs are from like your chickens, and your chicken oh, yeah. is from your chickens, and your exactly your chickens oh, are from, your from your chickens. No, I, I have yet to do that. Because uh, nowadays, until I mean, you don't really know. Right? If it traumatized the kids to kill them, they have you name the chickens. <laughs> oh well, wow! Oh, yeah. oh there yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, those are like oh, yeah. the houses they live in. And uh, oh, I can probably so well, whatever. I, a, I, I built a huge peacock palace for, for these peacocks, and they're pretty cool. The peacock palace. When yeah. I was on when I was uh, when I visited Kesey's farm in Oregon before he died, that was one of the what, most amazing things was, was the amount of peacock that he had in his yard i mean just hundreds and hundreds of which like it was like it's seeing cool. a, like everything even the animals had to be psychedelic that were on his farm you know what i mean like he had to pick the trippiest looking birds to Dude, be there I, I was just I, like, i've had they, one of, i'm sorry i i have i've had one of these peacocks since it was literally like this big i could hold it in the palm of my hand and wow. now now it's you know an enormous bird that has the spread of like over six feet tall and every time i go i go in there he puts his head down like this and he like shakes it a little and i and i, and I go hey george because his name is george mcfly <laughs> and, and i put my hand out and i could pet him he's like on his perch yeah. and he's got his head down and his like you know his, his talons are like the size of my hands they're like enormous and he's got his like this beautiful blue and green bird with these markings it's like such a gorgeous animal and he's just like letting me like pet him like on the neck but he's just like he's like uh, closing his eye like kind of like anyway it's it's so cool to have like these psychedelic animals even the goats are like psychedelic looking in their their pupils are like rectangles <laughs> and uh and they're just so yeah I, I i love that element i really love going outside and feeding the animals and maybe uh hey daddy Hey, I gotta tell my look, my dad. Hey, this is I was just talking. I'm doing an interview. I was just telling you hey. about my pizza. Hey. How, How you doing? doing? That's OT. Thank you. How you doing, Dad? Good. I know this is a podcast. So Hello. Hello. How you doing? Wow. How you doing? I dropped a, I dropped something that mommy gave me. Oh, thank you. We should let you guys go visit. Yeah, it's okay because we're right in an hour anyway. It's perfect. <laughs> wow. We were, we were we were hearing about the pizza the pizza that you make and the, he gave away the family secret the paintbrush of olive oil the olive oil paintbrush I tell you what I'm having I'm, I'm I'm having really a hard time getting down the elixir d'amor una furtiva lacrima dagli occhi suoi spunto and I'm going to tell them, let's get something simpler. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll figure that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's the family secret He's right there. <laughs> Thank you, you Dad. Of course, course. Okay, I'll okay, wait. Okay. Finish. Finish. Go, go inside. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, come right out. <laughs> so cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. You don't okay, have to shut yeah, yeah. the door. No, we, we, we normally play tennis on, on Wednesdays, and but we didn't today. So uh, oh, well, go yeah, hang yeah. with dad. That's yeah. The, you guys go play tennis. Yeah, man. We don't want to keep now, you from your father. Now we know where, where, it, <laughs> where it all comes from. Yeah. Right. It, it, it's an amazing life He's up awesome. here. I love it. I love my dad. I'll stop by and be like, I got you these oysters, you know, <laughs> here, I got you this good olive oil. You have olive oil. I'm like, yeah, you gave me a can of olive oil like a week ago. I still have olive oil. No, <laughs> but, uh, no it's great. It, it's, we're really, we're really fortunate to have, uh, and all the all the, the folks up here and and so and your all. pandemic was basically a dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I, it's hard to say that knowing how many musicians had a hard time with. But it. hey, man, it's okay. Yeah. Yin and Yang, you know. <laughs> this, is what, this is what happened. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm getting a bigger studio. Awesome. <laughs> God, but, uh, well, see, well man. thank you for uh, all of it. I mean, the yeah. mu you've you've been. Uh, your music's phenomenal. Your energy's amazing and needed. And uh, oh, so please needed. keep coming to New Haven. And I will bring you uh, Sally's and Modern and Bar and Peppies and Zupartis. And we'll put some, uh, some, some uh, 
Blindfold. I, blindfold on, and we'll do a taste test, and we'll decide what your favorite pizza, what the band's favorite pizza is. I would love to do that. I love eating. I love, <laughs> I love trying. I lo- I really love pizza. As a matter of fact, we're having pizza tonight, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> wow. Bless you, brother. Thank you so oh, much, man. Bless you, OTL. So good to see you. I'm glad you're doing great and killing it out there as always. And I can't wait to play music with you. It's one of these Same days. Same here. <laughs> Same here. All right. You have a good one, brother. All right, man. Thanks, see you, guys. Bye. Enjoy your day. Yeah. Bye. See you later.